Hey, what's going on guys? Kamekakins here. In this video we're gonna finally implement our attack tables for slide and pieces. And here is the so-called plain magic bitboards implementation that we're supposed to be making use of in this video. So we'll need to create uh, we'll need to create this uh, bishop attacks uh, array and the rook attacks array. And later on, using this uh, reference and idea, we would be actually taken uh, we, we, <laughs> we, we, we want to be extracting the attack uh, appropriate attack tables from from this sort of an array. Uh, I will go for a slightly more simplified implementation compared to this one but the idea is still the same so uh, remember like I've been talking about this uh, numbers of how many um, how many tables we have uh, uh, bearing in mind the number of possible occupancies for rooks and bishops so just ju just uh, another idea of where did I get these numbers initially so we don't really need this uh, browser anymore and let's get back to our source code let's start with compiling the previous version of it so if I can simply say make debug and just want to run the BBC binary executable nothing happened so far because we don't really we're not really doing much and now I just want to scroll uh, upwards where we have uh, our set of our magic numbers and here just probably right probably right after can attacks table we need to define the following things here so first we need mm, bishop attack masks and let's call this u64 bishop masks and it would be up to 64 elements the number of squares uh, okay and also rook attack uh, rook attack masks uh, bishop attack masks rook attack masks and u64 rook masks like this and now we need to define the attacks so bishop attacks uh, attacks table and u64 bishop attacks so 64 so here we have square and different variations regarding the occupancies occupancies okay and 512 possible occupancies here so th this is the number of bytes obviously representing the uh, possible number of occupancies and here we want to have our rook attacks table and again the square and the occupancies so u64 rook attacks and 64 squares and 4096 elements okay and now we can scroll down uh, where our find magics uh, function is available uh, yeah right over in here so it would be quite pretty similar to find magics at some point anyway uh, let's define the function called initialize init slider pieces uh, slider pieces attack tables and call this simply void and init sliders attacks okay so first uh, we need to initialize uh, bishop and rook masks yeah but obviously I forgot that it would also have the in bishop flag because we would be making this uh, either for rook or for a bishop and also don't forget to loop over uh, 64 
board squares. So four in square equals to zero, and the square is less than 64, and the square plus plus. Okay. So uh, we'll have our, uh, uh, yeah, let's start with the bishop. So bishop masks uh, indexed by the square would be equal mask uh, bishop attacks index, uh, sorry, it's a function uh, and the square. Okay, so mask bishop attacks takes the only argument, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. So, and exactly the same to be done for rooks. So, rook masks indexed by the square equals to mask rook attacks and take a square as an argument. Uh, now we need to initialize current mask and as far as this function is called only once uh, we can do the following way so we can simply say uh, u64 attack mask equals to so if this is the bishop in this case uh, well, we can actually call this mask, we could have actually referenced this bishop masks. Well, I'm wondering, yeah, we probably, probably can just reference this already, uh, as far as we, we, we got this initialized. So, bishop masks indexed by the square, and otherwise rook masks indexed by the square as well okay and also we need to initialize occupancy indices just just like we did uh just like we already did this before um, so integer occupancy indices equals to one left shifted on and again, uh, depending on what kind of mm, uh, what kind of attack mask we have, we need to uh, initialize relevant relevant bit count occupancy bit count. As far as we're not passing this from anywhere, so we can simply say like and relevant bits equals count bits and attack mask like this so and now it equals one left shifted by the relevant bits Okay, so just to make sure it still compiles, okay, A24, uh, okay, yeah, perfect. And now we need to loop over occupancy indices again, so for in index is equal to zero, index is less than occupancy indices and index plus plus and here uh, we need to distinguish between the, between the rooks and the bishops so in case of bishops uh, we can say if if bishop actually and otherwise this would be the rook case so else Be a bit more exact, I would say relevant bit 
bits count probably okay and here we grade the u64 occupancy variable and use our set occupancy function so the first argument is index and then this relevant bit count oh, sorry index relevant bit count and the very last one uh, the mask right so attack mask save so here we initialize current occupancy variation and the next thing we need to initialize our magic index so init magic index and it would be the integer right integer magic index equals to so we're taking our occupancy and multiplying by the magic number of a bishop so occupancy uh, multiplied by bishop magic number uh, on a given square right and right shift this to so to bear in mind the order of operation so first multiplying and then we need to say 64 minus bishop relevant bits uh, for this square okay and finally we want to initialize bishop attacks so we go for bishop attacks uh, indexed by the square and by the magic index would it be equal to bishop attacks on the fly and the current square and the current occupancy save okay and now exactly the same should have been done for a rook so relevant bit count so this would be appropriate so mask would be changed if this is the bishop a relevant bits count would be changed as well so here we need to reference the rook magic number and the rook relevant bits so also initializing the rook attacks at the square by the magic index and rook attacks on the fly okay so let's try to compile oh my god bishop magic number undeclared uh maybe bishop magic numbers and rook magic numbers okay relevant bits undeclared so relevant bits count save and rook attacks is that rook attack can be oh yeah rook attacks should be in plural okay yeah hopefully it compiles and now we need to provide a couple more functions to actually being able to easily reference uh, our attack tables so get bishop attacks and get rooks attacks uh, respectively so uh, this might be already called like static inline 
u64 get bishop attacks i'm making this static in line because we would be using this within the mood generator really uh, significantly so just try to make it as uh, as fast as possible so get bishop attacks but assuming the uh, a compiler optimizations it will probably uh, be doing this implicitly but just just for clarity uh, I'm putting this static in line to make sure that these are the functions that would be heavily used in the mode gen generator okay and in square and u64 occupancy so these are the arguments to be taken uh, and now regarding the Play Magic Bitboard's implementation, so we need to take our coupon C and bitwise end this with the rook mask on a current given square. Then we need to multiply our coupon C by the magic number, so a coupon C, uh, a coupon C uh, multiply by. Uh, so I'm oh, sorry this is the bishop uh, bishop attacks so uh, bishop mask sorry and multiply by bishop magic numbers uh, indexed by the square and finally right shift so occupancy right shift equals to 64 minus uh, bishop relevant uh, bits okay I just thought that probably we could have mm, implement some additional tables but no, let's let's just let's just drop it as is basically. Uh, sorry, rook relevant bits indexed by the square. So bishop masks in plural, I guess. Okay, so let's 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 bring commentary here. So we want to get uh, bishop attacks, assuming current board occupancy like this and now I just want to make the same but for for a rook so here we want to get rook attacks so get rook attacks save and so we have the rook masks, we have the rook magic numbers, and we have the rook relevant bits. Okay, so hope it still, it still compiles. And now, guys, I just want to hold my breath and try to uh, and try to actually run this, uh, try to test this, because <laughs> if I did something wrong, <laughs> it won't really be working correctly well anyway we need to uh, make use of this function so we need to initialize our slider slider piece attack so we need slider piece says attacks and paste this in okay so I hope uh, it's a few arguments uh, okay so we need to make this for bishop Okay, and also we, we need to do this for rook. Okay. Yeah, now this is correct. And <laughs> uh, now the moment of truth is gonna come, really. I'm sorry for this video lasting too long, but uh, I can do nothing to this, basically. So uh, let's create uh, as defined test bitboard and let's call this uh, u64 uh, occupancy 
and equals zero unsigned loan loan. So I just want to print the bid board showing this occupancy. So this occupancy variable serves as some possible real world occupancy during the game of chess. And now let's just try to. Um, so here we want print bishop attacks and print bit board and get bishop attacks. So we want to get bishop attacks, let's say for square of d4 and assuming this particular occupancy, save, okay, and yeah, let's have a look. Okay, something is going horribly wrong here. Uh, it, this can be the occupancy map for a bishop. So guys, hold on a second, I just need to figure out what has gone wrong here. Oh my god, guys, sorry, uh, I forgot to do <laughs> the remain thing. We need to actually return either bishop or rook occupancy. So return bishop, uh, attacks, sorry, attacks. So return bishop, the very, <laughs> the very essential line of code. Okay, bishop attacks, uh, indexed by the square and mm, by this occupancy. And the same thing for rooks. Oh my god, I really hope that it would have worked. <laughs> I hope so much. Okay, so let's make it rook attacks and rook attacks here. Okay, uh, let me run this again. Okay, hopefully we have this occupancies, uh, uh, we have this attack table for a bishop on and on an empty board. So here where, where attacks go, so it's quite pretty nice. And now we'll start setting up some bits to prevent the uh, attack race from uh, going on until the edge of the board. So let's put, a, uh, let's put a piece on C5. So let's say simply like set bit, and I wanna set bit on uh, occupancy and the c5 square so let's have a look okay perfect we have uh, uh our bishop array being dropped at the c5 okay now let's try to put it on f2 as well so set bit occupancy and f2 square save okay and now let's try let's say g7 okay so let's try g7 here. Okay, perfect, perfect. It drops on g7. So if we just put it on h8, it won't affect anything. So just to give you an idea, because it's the board edge. Okay, but let's drop back to g7, save. Okay, and what else to cut here? So we have three. So let's put a one on b2. So let's put one on b2 as well. Okay, yeah, it seems like quite pretty nice. Okay, and also uh, I will try the same for rook. So let's uh, so I, I will uh, I will use this kind of same occupancy bit board here. Well, probably I could have uh, even add a bit more to serve for rook. So I can I can put one more on g5. Let me actually done this. So put one more on g5. And put one more, let's say, on uh, e2 and e7. Okay, e2 and e7. Okay, so here is our occupancy. It doesn't really affect bishop that much, obviously. But let's now try to put our rook on e5. So. I want to print, uh, print rook attacks, so print bit board and get rook attacks 
and the D4 and the occupancy the same occupancy bit board because obviously all the pieces are working with the same occupancy bit boards okay so on D4 uh, see like here on D4 uh, here on D4 it can go wherever wherever and these occupancies don't really affect anything you see like so we have all the rooks for for a rook available but if we just now put it on e5 it should be dropping uh, where this occupancy is secure uh, occurring so let's try to put it now on e5 uh, e5 like this yeah and thanks thankfully thank god it works so so we got this uh, well let me just uh, uh, let me just replace them slightly a bit so here we actually print occupancies okay and here we set uh, pieces set locker pieces on board okay okay let's have a look so here is our rook attacks so rook is now on e5 so it goes to e6 and drops and e7 okay correct and then from e5 it goes to f5 and to g5 and drops correct and then goes to d5 and c5 okay and drops on c5 and here it drops on e2 which is correct and obviously uh, when we when we when we would implement the entire mood generator and also the e square attack function and go for perf testing if any bugs uh, are about to cure within our lookup attack tables obviously we will know about this because the perf test results won't really get passed but i really hope that uh, this sort of an of an implementation should actually work because I've been testing this uh, previously and I have at least one uh, bitboard mode generator generator based on magic bitboards in well this exact structure uh, th this exact logic for of initializing this letter piece attacks and it actually passes the perf per test quite pretty nicely well okay guys so this is it for this video and uh, I want to congratulate all of you guys uh, uh, all of those who has followed until this uh, video in particular because this is uh, some some of the very first milestones within the chessboard uh, within the bitboard uh, chess engine development process so we've just ended our attack part of the chess engine you know like uh, in uh, multi in, in those engines having multiple files you've probably seen uh, you have probably seen the files like attack.c which actually is responsible for all the stuff that regards to uh, pre-calculated piece attacks and probably the magic big words if any as well so uh, starting from this point uh, we will actually go further on and we'll implement our e square attack function and then we'll go for a mood generator obviously I would need to check uh, the code to make sure that everything works as expected so if any disaster is about to occur I will definitely let you know regarding that uh, uh, regarding that so this is it from my side guys I really appreciate you watching these videos and following the series I wish you all the best until the next time and take care